We are all existing within fragments of the imagination of some person or some people that made us believe it was reality, you know. I refuse to allow my imagination to be colonized. And my research is about the decolonization of the imagination and utilizing science as a tool through which we uncover possibility. And so my work in science education is going back to young folks that narratives have been written around, that expectations have been put in place for, and saying, let me go back and look and see what's more in them. Like these kids who just rap, who are only interested in commercial hip hop music, that have been told that they are not valuable enough or they're not academic enough. The same young folks who have been told that they can't do well in science are the same ones who are writing raps about science content and showcasing deep intellectual work. You know, my, my world and my work is about showing that the techies and fuzzies can get along, right? Uh, that, that folks who are interested in the social sciences and those who are interested in the hard sciences and engineering and mathematics actually can learn a lot from each other. And that when we pull those folks together into the same world, we actually push the boundaries of thinking in our society. And we allow folks who historically have thought, this is not for me, to say, wait, my, my, my aesthetic self, uh, my ancestral self for folks of color, right? Like that, that I have science and math in my DNA um, and that uh, the patterns of hair braids and ethnomathematics can be applied to work in co uh, contemporary mathematics. And, and that the way that Harriet Tubman was able to identify Polaris in the night sky can be connected to the ways that we learn physics today in classrooms. And the ways that I draw or think aesthetically and artistically can actually help me to be able to make better meaning of science. You know, that's what makes STEM and STEAM to me the most exciting area of study. I think it's reflective of where we are as a society. You know, as a society, we're in this, this moment where we're just like questioning everything. Like, you know, politically, we're in this state of flux and confusion. Um, artistically, folks don't know if they want to draw from new traditions or just allow AI to draw for them. And so in this era where we are at this sort of like point of not knowing, how magical is it that we have this marriage of the disciplines that were historically separated to come together to help us make meaning of what the world can look like going forward. And for me, it's to consider that science and math have historically been positioned as being only for the best and brightest, or the ones who are just the smartest amongst the bunch. And to reframe that whole perception of these disciplines and say, no, science and math are accessible to everybody. Whenever I have conversations with science and math teachers, the first thing I say to them is, I want you to forget the ways that you were taught science and math. I want you to recognize that science is not memorization, but it's the activation of the imagination. Uh, that, that mathematics is not dwindling down to the lowest common denominator to be able to just sort of understand math facts, but it's utilizing numbers to make meaning of the world. I try to shift their thinking about the disciplines. And then I try to train them to infuse their passions for it into a new way of teaching it. And then also to recognize that all young folks can have access to it. Um, and then the final thing I say to science and math teachers is, do not for a second believe that teaching from the aesthetic dimension first means that you're sacrificing the academic or the intellectual rigor. That we hold high academic expectations, we hold high rigor, but we transform the path through which we get to that rigor. We begin with radical love, and high expectations, and then we find success.